Do you read ingredient labels on your cosmetic products? Reading ingredient labels on products has been a habit of mine since, well, since before I got into hair. Cosmetology was not my first career. For a decade before that, I was a professional chef. I worked in uh, fine dining restaurants and even worked as a private chef. And I started my career pre-Google in the days where the internet wasn't as reliable and we had things like books. This is a book that probably every chef knows well, The Food Lover's Companion. It has, you can see how thick it is, it's a little reference book. I love reference books. You know, if you were back in the 90s, if you were ever wondering what an ingredient or a particular dish was, this is your go-to, first place you go as a reference. This is not my first copy. I wore out the binding on several copies before I eventually got this one. So when I became a hairstylist, the thought of, well, what is this dish made out of? What is this product made out of? That came really, really naturally to me. And I had to replace the Food Lover's Companion with something. So I started out with the Consumer's Dictionary of Cosmetic Ingredients. There are like graduate level or chemist level versions of this. And if you don't have a degree in chemistry, which I don't, you might not understand what's going on. And the descriptions of things assume that you have a certain amount of knowledge that most of us probably don't have, including myself. I love this and I've had this in several editions. Uh, it's, it's one of the resources I use to figure out what's going on inside of these products. I wanna to talk to you real quick about decoding your products. So if I grab my shampoo and I take a look at the ingredients, Oh, I should have brought my bifocals. Just kidding, kind of. <laughs> ingredients, first ingredient is water. That's terrific, you want that. And then as I go through the ingredients, I'm gonna see Violet 2 is extremely common. Most toning shampoos, that's the pigment that they use, Violet 2. You only need a very, very small amount of that to make something turn purple. So like this probably has a small amount. And the reason I know this is because Several ingredients before my Violet 2 is fragrance. Fragrance is an interesting ingredient to help you decode ingredient labels. The reason I say that is because there's, there's a legal maximum of fragrances allowed in cosmetic products. When I say cosmetics, usually people think of makeup, um, anything that can be used on hair, skin, and body externally is a cosmetic. So soap is a cosmetic, conditioner is a cosmetic, as well as lipstick and foundation. So as I'm looking at this shampoo, if I want to know how much violet too, how much of that pigment there is in here, I can kind of get a, an idea of more or less how much is in there. Because when I read the ingredient level, level? When I read the ingredient label, I know that ingredient labels are listed in order of concentration. First ingredient's water, this is gonna have the most of anything that's in here is gonna be water. But fragrance is really gonna help me out because there are legal maximums of fragrance allowed in cosmetic products. And they're usually somewhere in the order of three to 5%. So let's just say they went nuts and put 5% fragrance in here. That means that everything listed after fragrance is, is going to be in a concentration much lower than that. So I have fragrance one, two, three. The third ingredient after fragrance is going to be violet two. That lets me know that there is probably less than 3% of this purple shampoo is going to be that, that violet two. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You really don't need much of it. It's just a way of knowing more or less what the, what the concentration is. That just because there's a low concentration of something in a product doesn't mean it's not effective. Another thing about fragrances though, is fragrances are known as a potentially sensitizing ingredient. This is a fragrance. This is a fragrance. Let's see, if I open them up, mm. this is pear. So I have, I made some lip balms a little while back and I got this pear fragrance. And this one must be the coffee one. No, I didn't have coffee. It was chocolate mint. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. As I was measuring my fragrance out, I had a little plastic dish measuring it with a scale. Which is what you should do because it's way more accurate than using a measuring cup. I found that these fragrance oils melted the plastic measuring cup on my scale. That's volatile, man. This stuff is powerful. That was kind of a red flag for me. I thought, is that something I want to be putting in there? And maybe understand one of the reasons why there might be legal maximums 
of fragrance concentration, but I found that that lip balm seemed to make my lips more chapped. And I did make a fragrance free version and I didn't have any issues with that one. If you're using a lip balm that seems to make your lips chapped, you're probably getting contact dermatitis. There could be a, any number of reasons, any number of things that you could be sensitive to. Typically, more likely than not, it's gonna be the fragrance that you're sensitive to. So if you're using a lip balm that make, seems to make your lips more chapped, if you're using a lotion that doesn't seem to help, if you're using a hair product that seems to dry your hair out more than it should, very, very often the culprit is fragrance. Fragrance is protected by proprietary law, which means they don't have to disclose the ingredients in the fragrance. So if I put this, this bottle's made out of something, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. But if I were to add this to my products, the only thing I would have to say is I added fragrance because there's people are allowed to have trade secrets on what's in their fragrances. But one fragrance could have hundred ingredients in it. And any one of those things, a small percentage of people could be sensitive to. So keep an eye out for that. Use fragrance to understand how much concentration of any other products might be potentially in your hair products, but also pay attention to what order fragrance is on your ingredient label. And if the product seems to be sensitizing you in some way, look for a replacement product with a lower concentration of fragrance in it. Stay tuned for my next video where I take this yellow hair and actually test these out. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like what you saw and you want to see some more, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. Feel free to share with any of your nerdy friends. Click the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let me know what else you want to hear about. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.